Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick gaming demo for the Microsoft Surface Pro 8 in the Core i7 configuration. The specific model retails for $1,900 US dollars, has 16 gigs of RAM, and a half terabyte SSD. We'll be looking at Counter-Strike as well as Rust, possibly more games down the road, but for those of you that were wondering how things play, pretty much the rule of thumb here is that if you can get away with Full HD or 1200p in older titles, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, drop it down to 720p, and pretty much most of the things I've played end up being playable. You get somewhere between 40 and 60 frames per second, which I think is admirable. Uh, the i5, of course, doesn't have quite as much horsepower, but it is really close, and it's really just a matter of, again, dropping down the resolution, which on the 13-inch display works out. It's not like 720p or 1080p, or 1200p, I should say, is going to look bad. So let's go ahead and just jump into some dust. Um, that sounds odd when you say it aloud. Uh, 1200p here, uh, so let's do this right now, see what it looks like, although I already know. And I am using my Acasis uh, all-in-one hub, essentially. It is not Thunderbolt, but it is a favorite of mine. Those of you that have seen it in the past already know that it gives you a card reader, as well as two uh, USB-A ports. One is uh, a 3.1, another 3.0, and you have a Type-C 3.1 uh, audio jack. Uh, you have a full-size and micro uh, SD card reader, Ethernet, HDMI, and of course that NVMe, NVMe slot so that you can boost storage, and also 100 watt power delivery over on this side. So really an ideal accessory, in my opinion, for the Surface Pro 8 line, as well as any other Ultrabook on the market. I really like it. Um, it was sent over for review and I pretty much never put it down. So let's go ahead and jump into game. We're gonna be playing with some bots. And right now we're getting around 60 frames per second. Hopefully you're all able to see that in the upper right corner. I don't have any audio on. We'll get a fresh round here in a second. And the audio on the Surface Pro 8 line is really good. So if you're looking to game, you're not gonna be disappointed uh, with the overall experience in my opinion. Uh, it's the best audio I've heard from any uh, PC, you know, Windows-based tablet ever made. So kudos to Microsoft for pulling that off. Uh, historically, the audio on the Surface Pro lineup has not been that impressive. And who knows, I may end up rolling in uh, some demos with audio, but I think it's really important just to see what the frame rates are like. So let's try this again. Even just running through warm up, uh, you'll see it right now. And I think, you know, this really gives us a very good idea of how exciting another, you know, year or two in terms of generations might be for what the Surface Pro lineup could potentially end up being. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting a larger display. And if, you know, Intel is able to keep improving integrated graphics performance, uh, things are going to be really interesting. I mean, it's already quite amazing uh, that you can game on this. And, you know, you could game on previous generations as well as I accidentally take off uh, the silencer. But the big difference here is that you can also use an eGPU. So if you want to use an external GPU, you can do that. I got killed by a bot. Don't judge. Uh, I am talking and playing at the same time and at an incredibly awkward angle, not to make excuses. Um, but that is the truth of the matter. I mean, we are now at a generation of Surface where the screen got larger. Uh, gaming as well as uh, photo and video editing are the best they've ever been. And now with Thunderbolt 4, you can pretty much do just about anything any other Ultrabook on the market can. So it's definitely uh, an impressive piece of hardware. And I'm just glad that Microsoft decided to finally modernize what was already a great product, but of course was missing that extra polish. So we're going to get into a round here. It looks like I'm facing a team of bots. I don't have a problem with that. After all, this is just a demo. 60 frames per second right now. Let's see if I can kill a bot. There we go. And, you know, I haven't played CSGO in a while. Uh, I used to be very competitive. You can see I'm missing my headshots on that frozen bot right there. But it, again, to be able to play this as well as Rust is just a really nice experience. And the i5 is able to compete as well. I mean, it's not, again, as good as the i7, 
but if you're willing to drop down the resolution, I really don't think it's a big de uh, deal at all. And, you know, I'll dig into more titles, but those of you that wanted to know, I wanted to be able to accommodate, give a sample, and that's exactly why we're looking at this right now. Uh, in terms of, you know, more complex titles, Cyberpunk, um, I wouldn't have any expectations. GTA, I think we're going to be able to play. I mean, GTA was a go on older surfaces, so I don't see why we wouldn't be able to get something out of here. Whoa, there's quite a few bots there. Uh, so, as you can see, we're locking in on decent frame rates, uh, somewhere between 40 and 60. And, again, if I were to drop this down to 720p, which I might just to show you for a second here, it's only going to get better. I got killed by a bot again. It's an MVP bot. Uh, so, is this right for you? I mean, if you're looking to game and you want to have this form factor, it's going to be really hard to beat. In fact, you won't beat it right now in 2021. And that's the appeal of the Service Pro 8 in so many ways. Uh, there are a lot of two-in-ones on the market. I've said this uh, in my coverage so far, but none are quite as polished, uh, as attractive, as modern now as the Surface Pro 8. The other thing is, the Surface Pro 8 is the most expensive uh, device of its kind, no question about it. And that's another thing it holds. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, it's its own place in the market. So not only is it unique, but incredibly expensive. I mean, for the price of this i7 build, $1,900, uh, you can easily buy a gaming laptop. So clearly this is not about gaming. It's about showing the versatility of this two pound in change uh, tablet that also is an Ultrabook. And uh, through the course of reviewing it so far, I have to say I have contemplated picking one up. You know, at first I thought there's no way I could be sucked into this. I review so much hardware, but, you know, if there wasn't a pandemic going on or if I just, you know, needed to travel more for business, this is an ideal tool for productivity and even a little bit of play here, as you can see. And, you know, that's, I think, what a lot of people in the marketplace are looking for. And the 13-inch display is a vast improvement. Now, would I like to be able to game at the native resolution? 2880, 1920, uh, sure. Is that going to happen? No. Um, you're not going to be able to run anything at native res. Boy, I can't even get to anybody. Um, one of my teammates is just taking out the whole team. But that's a good thing because I'm just sharing with all of you a demo here. And I'm also going to be doing a uh, essentially a video covering Thunderbolt accessories, hard drives, docks. Uh, so you know, hopefully that'll round out a collection of different devices that I think make ideal pairings for uh, this brand new hardware from Microsoft, which again is best in class and just reminds me as I get killed by a bot why I always loved uh, the Surface Pro and just hoped that we were going to get something a little bit better. And now we have it. If I didn't kill that bot, I would have quit. And we're going to jump over to Rust here in a second. Uh, Rust is a little tougher to play on the i5, but again, you're not going to grab incredible frame rates from either of these machines. It's all about pushing that res down, and once you do it, I think, you know, we may be able to play Cyberpunk in um, <laughs> potato mode, so we'll see. I may get there, I may not. The one limitation is, of course, SSD space, and that's where I'm really interested in seeing uh, how things run, and I may demo that uh, with a game like GTA, since it is pretty bulky, uh, running it directly from an NVMe drive. And I think that's another thing that people need to be aware of with the Thunderbolt 4 connectivity. I think that's a big deal. And this isn't a voiceover. Uh, for those of you wondering, I am playing and talking at the same time. Not that I'm uh, bragging here. I am not. I'm playing with a bunch of bots and a few humans, and this, this guy keeps killing everybody. He's not leaving me anything. I'm just not fast enough. Do one more round and then let's jump over to Rust, see what that looks like. And I also have Call of Duty uh, World War II on here, which I may end up uh, demoing. Uh, I don't know that I'll do that in this video uh, because I think this gives you a pretty good idea of the competency. And the audio doesn't get 
as I get murdered again by a bot, it, uh, excuse me, the uh, fans, they don't really get that loud. I mean, if you can hear it now, that's pretty much it, which I don't think is bad. I think it's pretty good. The machine does get warm, but you're not going to be uh, touching it in this capacity. And of course, you could be outputting this uh, to a display as well, which is pretty cool. All right, so the bomb is not here. I'm at the wrong site, but it's taken care of again by that teammate who's killing all the bots for me while I show all of you that we do average, as I've stated, between 40 and 60 frames. So pretty good. I mean, previous generations wouldn't be able to pull this off at this resolution. Uh, and if I drop it down, things are only going to get better. Let's just throw a scar in here. Um, I know I'll, I'll take some flack for this, but they're already, seems like that same guy's killing everybody. And I don't blame him because everybody is essentially a bunch of bots. It's done already again. <laughs> He's not giving me a chance, but that's not a bad thing. I just wanted to demo this. By the way, screen brightness is not at 100%. Uh, if it was, this would be totally blown out. I will show you that right now. Oh, it's not blown out. It was earlier, so yeah, that was actually inside of Rust. So uh, that explains why uh, CSGO, uh, the brightness level is perfectly fine. It's Rust where things get uh, blown out. So let's see how the bots... Oh, they're all dead already. This guy just keeps killing the entire bot team. I wish we had some human players here. And it's been a long time since I've played CSGO. I'm sure it shows... I used to be highly competitive uh, years back. Used to put up some content on the channel. Oh. Thought I was going to get my shot. He killed everybody. So that's it. Let's jump over to Rust, take a look at that. And this way, you'll get an idea of what to expect out of Rust. And of course, as I stated, if I were to drop this down to 720p, things would only get better. Loading times are essentially the same between the i5 and the i7, although the i7, I feel like, has a little bit more pep in its step. And again, that's to be expected. It's a much more expensive system. $400 premium uh, between the two builds I'm reviewing. And is that justified? I don't know. I mean, if you really do plan on doing photo, video editing, and gaming, the i7 does have an edge. So, uh, But as I stated in my comparison, I think the majority of users aren't going to care about that performance difference because it is so small and it is easily accommodated by just cranking things down. So inside of Rust right now, screen resolution 720p uh, and then as far as graphics, I just left everything standard. Um, you know, you can turn on the max performance for the uh, NVIDIA DLSS, of course, uh, but let's just jump into a server. Load times with Rust are miserable. But this gives you an indication that, you know, you're going to be able to play other modern titles um, as well, just not AAA, you know, nothing, nothing too fancy when it comes to the Surface Pro 8. And you shouldn't expect that. It is, you know, an under two pound tablet that really is only matched by a few devices which can't match it. You know, they're, they're behind the curve on trying to be in the same league uh, with the Surface Pro 8 line right now. And that's because... This is a refresh from one of the largest companies in the world, and certainly the largest software maker in the world. And uh, again, when these things go on sale, it's going to be tough for me to take a pass on it. Um, I've got that Best Buy birthday coupon going on right now, but even still, uh, the pricing is just a little, little too much for me to bear in the scope of you know the options out there. Uh, that main gear. Uh, Vector Pro is a lot more to the tune of what I would want to drop 1800 on. Of course, portability not similar, but that main gear Vector Pro, even though it's a 17.3 inch uh, laptop, gaming laptop, can fit in my 15 inch um, compartments uh, for traditional 15 inch laptops because it's so thin, so light uh, at you know 4.4 pounds. So it's twice the weight of this machine. Uh, but it's got a, a 3080, if, if you go for the $1,800 version, it's got a 3070. The HP Omen 17, when that's available, it's right, at, right now out of stock, but I may be getting a 3080 for a review from my um, HP rep. 
Uh, that 3070 model is absolutely phenomenal. But again, apples to oranges. Gaming laptop, that's just a workhorse compared to the mobility champion here. And realistically, two-in-ones are what you're going to point at for most of your comparisons, which is what I've started to do. And I've got more of those coming. For those of you that want to see more two-in-one comparisons, I'll likely end up comparing this to um, the Lenovo uh, Yoga 9i, because I think that's a solid comparison. Um, 14 inches, one of the best Ultrabooks on the market, um, as well as uh, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. Uh, because that is another thing that I think a lot of people must be wondering, even though the refresh on that is imminent, uh, it just is yet another question. Should I be considering that? And I only bring that up because a lot of people, you know, point to the iPad in the 12.9 uh, Pro capacity, and it's not a computer, neither is the Sammy, uh, but it is a tablet. Again, the Surface Pro is the tablet that also is a computer, and that is why I've always loved it. Uh, so we're getting 43 frames per second right now, and this is totally playable. I mean, if you know Rust, if like me, you've been playing it since its inception, um, and it's a, it's a fun game. It can be really rewarding or uh, somewhat frustrating. It does have a little bit of everything. Um, Minecraft mixed with uh, weapons and certainly better graphics, but the graphics are nothing amazing. So when you're playing on something like the Surface Pro 8 and you drop the res down to 720p because you're playing on a 13-inch display like this, I don't think there's a real big loss. I mean, I'm, I'm accustomed to playing on a 4K 48-inch OLED LG at 120 hertz or uh, alternatively 27-inch Asus 144 hertz um, you know, HDR gaming display, um, the original master of all that now is getting emulated left and right. And at 4K, you know, this game, it looks better, but there's only so much graphical juice in this title. So this isn't one of those games where you're going to get an amazing um, difference, really, ironically, between hardware like this and a 3090 or a 3080 or a 3070 in either a laptop or desktop capacity because, you know, it kind of has potato graphics to begin with. But... As you can see with me running around the map uh, and it drawing essentially all of the structures, uh, trees, grass, we're still bottoming out at like 47, really low 40s on the frame rates. Once I get towards this building, uh, we'll see it drop down, but not much. And this is totally playable. So this is, again, what makes uh, the Surface Pro 8 really attractive to me is that I could see this going anywhere with me and know that... As long as I have the power brick, we're going to be able to game. Now, if I remove the power brick, this is probably what a lot of you are wondering, and I didn't do this with CSGO, one of the nice things is, is that performance stays locked in. Um, you know, for the most part, you're not going to see a major drop-off, but your battery is going to be depleted incredibly quickly. So while we're now running on internal battery power, and this is something a lot of machines suffer from when you go to internal power, you do quickly lose performance. You can't get max performance out of it. Uh, but it seems like the Surface Pro uh, 8 in both the i7 and i5 continue to maintain that best performance uh, here in Windows 11 when gaming. I'd be curious how Windows 10 would pr uh, perform on this, but of course, I'm not going back. So, sorry there isn't more action on this server. Uh, I could have gone to a highly populated one. I would have been murdered instantaneously. It wouldn't have really served a purpose for showing you frame rates, but Rust is totally playable and looks great even at 720p. But that wraps it up. For those of you wondering what I've been using as my mouse, there it is. Um, Logitech uh, G502, uh, really my favorite wireless gaming mouse. And it's also good for content creation as well. A um, little bit of both. Oh, we have some action. So, uh, that pretty much rounds things out. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.